solve using factoring. Now we look at it and of course our first thought here would be to isolate that variable x. But given that we're learning about a new method of solving so let's give that a try first. First we'll get the 0 on the right. That's our first step. And to do that we'll subtract 32 from both sides. And so we're left with 2x squared minus 32 equals 0. So perfect, we have our 0 on the right. So moving on to the next step, let's factor. First, we consider the greatest common factor, and we see that we can pull a 2 out of both of these terms. So 2 times x squared minus 16 equals 0. But we also recognize that we could go a step further, and we could see difference of squares here. So 2 x plus 4 x minus 4 equals 0. So that's fully factored, so good to head on to the next step. Given that we know that 0 times anything is 0, we know that our solutions are the x values that would make any of these factors equal to 0. So the first factor, what can make 2 equal to 0? Well, nothing. 2 is 2. It's never going to equal 0 no matter what x is. So this factor does not lead to a solution. Second factor. What can we do to make x plus 4 equal 0? Well, if x equals minus 4, then x plus 4 is 0. So that would be our first solution. x equals minus 4. Now we look at our last factor here. And what could make x minus 4 equal 0? Well, if x was plus 4, then that would be 0. So there's our second solution, plus 4. And that's all of our factors. So we have two solutions. x equals negative 4 or plus 4. And we can always use our isolating the variable to confirm our answer over here. Let's check. First we'll divide both sides by 2 and x squared equals 16. And then we'll square root both sides which leaves us with an x on the left and plus or minus 4 on the right. And this agrees perfectly with our new factoring method. 